In our testing of the DeWalt PowerStack 5 amp hour battery, we found a lot of variables as to why people would want that power stack and maybe why they want to save some money and go to the 6 amp hour battery. Now, two videos back or so, we went through the fact that 5 amp hour is 5 amp hour and we put the XR 5 amp hour and the PowerStack 5 amp hour on this heat gun, ran them through, showed that their times that they ran were very, very similar, but what we put out might have been a little bit of misinformation at the end of the video. And that is something I'm going to apologize for. And I'll show you exactly why. When we ran through that test, we did not have our voltmeter hooked up to this. We just did the test to prove that they ran the same. But we did hook up the voltmeter after they were done and checked the ending voltage. Well, these batteries all bounce back a little bit and the five amp hour has a pretty slow bounce back rate. So when it hits the bottom of where it is, it, you can kind of see it come back slowly. Now the power stack, when that sucker turns off, it bounces back in voltage very, very quickly. So I wasn't able to get in and see exactly where that battery cut off. Now, while we're showing this, I'll show you the six amp hour also bounces back pretty slowly. What I wanted to do in this video, basically go through all these batteries that we have, the, the 5 amp hour XR, the PowerStack 5 amp hour, and the 6 amp hour XR, and just show how they will slowly go down in power. It was interesting to say the least. I mean, interesting to say the least. As we went down, the 5 amp hour uh, XR battery actually like to de deplete itself quite quickly. And it got down to the end and it held in some cases even in the 15s and in, in, in the 14s and then down in the 13s and then died in, at 11, in, a, in the 11 area, low 11s. I'm gonna guess that the BMS and the battery cut it out when it seen 11. It was, it was falling fast. Now the power stack, when it went down, it held a lot higher voltage up until the end, but it still, went out at 12.10 volts. And I'm gonna guess the BMS on that cut it off at 12 and we just seen 12.1. That's interesting to say the least because it did hold a higher voltage, no doubt. We did not see much of the 14s. We didn't see any of the 13s for any of a long period of time at all. And all this stuff I kind of graphed out in a 30 second interval. And then when I went to the XR six amp hour battery, as we rolled down, and got to the end, we did see pretty much the same thing where it died fairly quickly and we didn't see it live in the 13s long. It just kind of went through, hit that 1210 and it died at 11.08 as far as I seen. And I'm sure again, 11 was that cutoff. As far as the heat gun runtime on this one, I got a little different results, which I think is odd. The uh, XR 5 amp hour battery went for 17 minutes 30 seconds maybe 17 26 25 it was really close power stack five amp hour this time went for 16 minutes 26 seconds so almost a minute less the six amp hour xr went for 21 minutes on this which is great and it ended it seemed to hold voltage pretty good so it's tough to call what you're gonna use. But this was kind of a precursor test to once we get out the circular saw, that's gonna show us really when we put some high power onto it, what it's gonna hold. But we've done that with the drill already and the power stack really rocked it out with that. So we're gonna see how it's gonna work with this circular saw in the next video. But I think it's interesting to watch how these batteries drain down, where they hold their voltage, what one holds the higher voltage, and there's no doubt that the 21700 cells really rock it out for holding some voltage quite a bit higher than many of the others do out there. And while this XR 5 amp hour battery pack might be the most popular DeWalt battery pack out there, it's definitely probably not the highest performing. It is a great balance of power in size, there's no doubt about that. But man, very, very interesting. One of the things a lot of us do is purchase tools based on their performance that we see at full battery pack power. And that to me is a little bit interesting because what if we could see what these tools would do at half battery pack power, which is more realistic as far as what most of us use our tools at. 
per se if you're using an impact wrench. By the time you get to the fourth, tenth, fifteenth tire, what performance are you getting to remove lug nuts? Are you still getting anywhere near that peak performance that we all looked at to buy that tool? That's interesting to me. How quickly does that performance deteriorate and what are we going to see? Because most mechanics are going to want to buy the tool that holds that peak performance the highest throughout the whole range. Maybe not the tool that holds the peak performance the highest only at 100% battery and dips the rest of it and it dives down in performance quite quickly. That's a test that I'm interested in seeing. Not quite sure yet how to put that one through, but I'm gonna work on that. It's interesting to see the graphs on these batteries. I'm gonna work on a little bit more of all the batteries and kind of how they deteriorate downhill. And that can kind of tell us what battery might be one of the better ones to buy if we find it at a great deal. Next up is the circular saw test. That one should be interesting. We'll have a lot more batteries in on that one. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. Share this video out there if you would. That helps us kind of get out and gain traction a little bit more. As always, we appreciate your time. Have a great day.